Footage has been released, showing the first moments after the Israeli attack on the UAV production plant in Shamsabad, near Iran's Iraq city. The video footage shows fire in the UAV production plant. Iran has banned filming from the region. However, channels associated with the Iranian opposition published the video today. The destruction of the UAV production plant could seriously affect Iran's ability to supply kamikaze drones for Putin's army. The Israel Defense Forces attacked Iranian military sites, including air defense batteries and facilities involved in the production of ballistic missiles used in Iranian attacks on Israel on October 1 and April 14. Israel's attack paralyzed the production of ballistic missiles in Iran. The American portal Axios wrote about it. Israel's retaliatory strike against Iran disabled a critical component of Iran's ballistic missile development program, said the article with reference to three sources from Israel. It also says that Israel hit 12 planetary mixers that were used to produce solid rocket fuel for long-range ballistic missiles. According to the interlocutors of the portal, the affected objects are extremely complex equipment, which Iran does not produce, but orders abroad. The representative of the United States confirmed that the strike significantly weakened the missile potential of Iran. Restoration of production capacity may take no less than a year, since Iran is forced to buy such equipment in China, since it does not produce it on its own. In addition, limiting Iran's ability to produce new ballistic missiles will affect its support for allies such as Hezbollah and the Houthis. Israeli sources also reported that the attack hit four batteries of S-300 air defense systems that protected Tehran and its nuclear and energy facilities. The Iranian army in its statement confirmed that the attack took place from the airspace of Iraq and damaged several radar systems, but did not mention the loss of facilities engaged in the production of missiles or drones, emphasizing its right to respond. Israeli sources confirmed that the strikes were carried out from the airspace of Syria and Iraq, some of them near the border between Iraq and Iran. U.S. President Joe Biden noted that Israel's strikes were aimed only at military targets, and expressed the hope that this would put an end to the exchange of attacks between Israel and Iran. He also called to do everything possible to protect American troops and help Israel in case of possible retaliatory actions by Iran or its allies. Meanwhile, the Prime Minister of Qatar called on all parties to refrain from further escalation. The day before it became known that Israel struck Iran. Before that, the Iranian authorities, preparing for the expected counterattack from Israel, ordered the armed forces of the country to be ready for war. The military was instructed to develop several plans to respond to the Israeli attack. There was a drone attack on Russia's Voronezh region on the night of October 28. This was reported by Russian telegram channels. An explosion and fire occurred as a result of an attack by Ukrainian kamikaze drones on the ethanol spurt distillery. As a result of the fire, the plant's building was seriously damaged, and one of the barrels in which the alcohol was stored was burnt out. At the same time, Two nearby residential houses and a farm building were also damaged. It is said that at least one person was injured as a result of the incident. The ethanol spurt plant was attacked by Ukrainian drones on October 22. As a result, an explosion and fire occurred. It should be noted that distilleries in Russia are also used to meet military needs. These plants produce fuel and explosives for military equipment. 
The Russian Ministry of Defense announced that 10 Ukrainian drones were shot down over the Voronezh region. Satellite imagery shows signs of a major renovation and expansion at a restricted military facility near Moscow that once housed a Cold War biological weapons program, the Washington Post reported. Sergeyev Pozad, 6, a military site northeast of Moscow, was a Soviet biological weapons research center during the Cold War. The Soviet military used the lab to experiment with weaponizing the viruses that cause smallpox and Ebola, among others. Shortly after Russia launched its full-scale invasion of Ukraine in February 2022, Satellite imagery indicated massive construction and renovation at the Sergeyev Pozad, 6 site, The Washington Post reported, citing photos from imaging firms Planet Labs and Maxer. The expansion amounts to over 250,000 square feet and 10 new buildings. According to experts in biodefense, the military, and satellite imaging who spoke to the Washington Post, the facilities harbor some of the distinctive features of high-security biological labs that handle dangerous pathogens. Among these features are extensive rooftop air handling units, underground infrastructure, heightened security, and a possible power plant. The layout is consistent with lab design and suggests maximum containment labs, one expert said. The upgrades are consistent with this secure, top-secret military biological facility's historic role in developing viral biological weapons, said Andrew Weber, a former Pentagon official and senior fellow at the Council on Strategic Risks. Russian officials have said that the purpose of the labs is to study Ebola viruses and other deadly microbes in order to protect Russia from possible bioterrorism. The expansion at Sergeyev Pozad, 6 coincides with a Russian disinformation campaign in the early months of the full-scale invasion, when the Kremlin falsely accused Ukraine of developing biological weapons. Officials told the Washington Post that it is impossible to tell from the satellite photos whether Russia plans to use the Sergeyev Pozad, 6 labs to research and develop biological weapons. Biological warfare is banned under international law. While there is no evidence Russia has used such weapons in its war against Ukraine, Kiev has accused Moscow of launching thousands of chemical weapons attacks during its ongoing invasion. Russian President Vladimir Putin has also repeatedly resorted to nuclear blackmail to deter Ukraine's Western allies from a more aggressive response.